until around six weeks ago when I was shooting wildlife, I used to use my Nikon D500 with the Nikon 200 to 500 mil lens here. Until about Christmas last year, that wasn't a big deal. I used to be able to go for wildlife photo walks for up to like two, two and a half hours. Although I felt a little bit tired when I came home because this lens here is around two odd kilos, it wasn't a big problem. Towards the start of this year, I started having problems with my health, getting a lot of the shakes, and getting tired very easily. And I found carrying the D500 with the Nikon 200-500 was starting to get a problem for me. I was missing photos because of the shakes, even though the VR on this lens is so good, I was missing photos. By the time the two hours was up, I was exhausted carrying this gear around. So I was talking to a friend of mine about this and he said, you should look at a monopod. And this is what I got, a monopod with a bald head. If you understand a bald head, normally the bald head just, you sit on top like this, but it swings too much forward and back and sideways for wildlife photography. So just swing it to the side like this and it was great. And this might be great for you too, because it just swings up and down and you swing sideways. You're not having to have hold this weight, nearly 2.6 kilos. It was a great setup with my D500. When I bought my Nikon C6 II, I had a great time taking photos. But when it came to taking video, because this was the main reason that I upgraded from the D500 to the Z6 II, I found I couldn't take video. It was just too unstable. Yes, it was stable to take photos, but as soon as I came to record video, can you see the movement here? This is what was happening. If you've ever tried to record video, handheld or even on a monopod, you'll know that just the slightest amount of movement is going to be a huge problem because your viewer will just see something moving around like this. I had to look at a different option. And this is what I started using. My Manfrotto 055 XP Pro with a Vanguard pan and tilt head. Now this setup was great, but at 3.5 kilos, it was a lot to lug around. And with this setup, I was able to take great photos and great video because a pan and tilt head is designed for video. You can swing it around very stably this way. Also, I could just bring it up and down. This gave me a very stable platform, but it was a lot to carry around. This was all I had because I'd looked around for a carbon fiber tripod and it was around $500. And at that time, I really couldn't spend $500. So I said, okay, well, by Christmas, I'll save up. I'll look at a Sure or another popular brand of carbon fiber tripods and buy one. I was chatting to a friend of mine and he was telling me that he had bought an Artsis carbon fiber tripod for around $350. It was a very heavy duty tripod and it was great, very stable. I looked on the internet and this is the Artsis AS ATC carbon fiber tripod that I bought. And I only paid $250 for it. Nice chunky legs, but I also needed to look for a new tripod head because I didn't want to keep using the Vanguard because my idea leaving the Manfrotto was to reduce weight. It wasn't just using the other Vanguard pan and tilt head because my overall thing was trying to reduce the weight as much as possible. So I bought a Lego Photo two-way tilt head, not a pan and tilt, just a two-way. So it only rotates forward and back. This comes in at 1.2 kilos less than my Manfrotto outfit, which means I'm carrying 1.2 kilos less in weight all the time. And that is a huge saving for me. But this tripod has something that my Manfrotto didn't have, and that is a leveling base. A leveling base means that you don't have to worry about getting your tripod level. Because with my Manfrotto, when I set it down, I had to make sure it was perfectly level on all axes, left, right, front and back. Because if it wasn't, when I pan from one side to the other, the video could tilt. You always end up having to cut and splice video. And if it's not perfectly horizontal, then when you're straightening your video, you're cropping the video so you're not going to get the same view. It's great for photos and all that. It's not a big deal. But for video, it is very important. And this is why a leveling base is so important. And you can see I can actually move 
the whole top of the tripod here. So, and it doesn't matter if the tripod is not level. I just unscrew the leveling base, get it perfectly straight. Now I have a perfect leveling base, even if my tripod is not level. With the two-way tilt, it can only go two ways, down and up. And that's it. And this is how I use it. And I've got the, the base of a little panorama rig, which means I can just move it sideways and then just tilt down or up to suit what I want to take photos or video of. This is my new setup. And about two and a half weeks ago, I finally was able to put this to the test for a wildlife photo walk. We've had pretty bad weather up here in Queensland, so it was great to get out to this place called the Oxford Foot, where not many birds around, but I got great videos and great photos. And in the video, even though I spliced a lot of the video, everything was level. And this is my new wildlife setup. And it's the setup that I'm taking to Thailand in around a week's time, because I'm going for a holiday for about three weeks. I hope to come back with some great photos and video of the wildlife that I see, especially the bird life, because that's what I'm into these days. If I'm just going out and I don't want to take video, then all I'm going to use is my monopod because I don't need this to take just photos. I just need the monopod to be able to give me a stable base. And maybe if you are one of these people that find that your gear is heavy, look at a monopod. Monopods aren't that expensive. A monopod with a bald head, you can pick it up for less than $100 and you're going to find that you're going to get better photos because you don't have to carry your heavy gear around. This monopod is going to be a blessing disguise for you because you're going to take better photos. So thanks for watching. All the gear that I've talked about now, I'll put it in the description box below. If you've got any questions or feedback about the gear that I use, leave it in the comment box below. I'll answer your question. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. It really helps me out. Stay safe, enjoy your wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.